So <clears throat> this would be the absolute beginning stages of a new project, which is going to be essentially this this view. It took me a while to to find it, <clears throat> and I'm here at the Florence Griswold Museum, and there's over there is Miss Florence's house. That would actually make a good view, also for a painting. But essentially, the challenges this morning have just been to get set up. And I only had really one goal, which was just to find a spot with the idea that you could come back to it multiple days. But um, I walked here this morning. It's now afternoon, but I walked here this morning and basically found this sort of a view with the road leading you in. I hope to talk more about composition during this. But um, not starting with much drawing at all, just kind of just getting the direction lines. You know, landscape painting is very much about different things than uh, something like still life or, or basically landscape is much more lyrical and, and things are moving around, you know, swaying in the breeze. It's not so much about just getting things in the exact location. But the main thing in a landscape painting is you have to make, you have to make the eye of the viewer pass, pass over the uh, center line. So if this is the center line, you have to lead the, the viewer in and it, the viewer has to cross the center line at least one time um, in the painting. So, and that, that idea comes from uh, Henry Rankin Poor. I'm definitely gonna put the link to his book from 1903 on composition. Um, that's another one of those books that'll really, really change your, your way of looking at uh, landscape or any composition. But some of the fundamentals coming up, um, I was trying to remember some of the basic fundamentals of landscape painting. Uh, the first thing is that the warms, and basically your these reds in through here, a lot of these reds, the, the warmer yellow ochres, um, they're going to be reserved more for the foreground. And in contrast to that, the further you go back, um, it's going to be more more blue takes over, basically like the ultramarine blue and the Prussian blue. And you really notice that when you really notice that when you're driving in a place like Vermont or something and you're seeing the mountains in the background way out in the distance and they'll look absolutely blue or blue gray and you won't find any like warm colors on a mountain, you know, a mile or two in the distance. And so the same, the same uh, fundamentals happen here. So it's good to kind of keep that in mind a little bit. Yeah, when I first come, when I first came out here, it was uh, overcast, and now that the sun's come out, it's casting all these shadows across the road. I definitely want it to be a sunny picture for sure. Um, so I've definitely decided it's going to be a sunny picture. That means you kind of, at this point, you just make the decision that you're only going to come out on sunny days like if tomorrow were like a rainy day or something you'd start a different picture you wouldn't try to do this picture basically but those cat shadows are too interesting not to want to have in the picture the uh clouds have started to come out or a little bit here um but one of the things i'm happy about is that i've got the i'm gonna have the sky in there which i feel like it, it needs because you have the blue of the water basically the way it, um, the blue of the water is going to kind of keep appearing as you go across here. Hopefully those, as you, you know, as we work on it for the next probably two weeks, uh, hopefully that uh, the, the branches and stuff, the leaves won't fill in too much and then you still be able to see the, the Lieutenant River there. Um, but I like having the, almost like the mirror of it essentially with the sky and the water. Just, just is gonna fit at the very top. I'm still in the start phase, but essentially like a lot of the picture is solved at this point because out here I know where, um, basically I know where each of these trees are in through here and they kind of act as points. Um, and that's kind of the only drawing you really need. Obviously you have the road coming through here as it will be through here. But each of these, I'm feeling pretty comfortable that each of these trees is basically in the right place in relation to each other. 
and as I said, I'm happy that the, there's going to be the sky in there. The other thing that's happened is that the sun has gone from basically from here to over here, and it's shifted the shadows downwards, basically, further down in my picture from where they were. But I, I find it's good to just kind of make note of that for next time, and that you, you'll kind of know that going into it next time and you'll have like a certain amount of time to work on my cast shadows in the place where they where you want them to be unless you want to move them downwards now and another thing I forgot to mention and I think Foster Cadell mentions it pretty well in his book I'm gonna have to go back and review it but the concept of in sunny conditions that the shadows are actually violet in color or like a blue violet I think he says violet um, but it's something, it's a good thing to keep in mind, especially in the foreground. Um, and that means in contrast to that, the, the sunny side of whatever object in the lights will have a warm, kind of more of a yellow-orange quality to it, being the complement. Um, and you really notice it in Impressionist pictures in, uh, in the snow, where the shadows have that blue, blue-violet, basically, color. Real quick, planning ahead. I always find this happens, you start to make notes of where, make note of, like almost subconsciously of where things are at certain times. Like right now the shadows have really shifted position a lot. But I really like the way the light hits the, um, kind of the green leaves over, over and through here at the moment. So you kind of plan for if you get another sunny session soon, um, you might hold off on the green the green leaves until a little bit later in the painting and maybe attack the cast shadows first and the path first next time. And it's pretty much reached the end of day one just because of the sun has changed things quite a bit. But at least it's set up to, uh, to continue on the painting. Just working on this tree over here, I don't think it's going to show up in my camera, but when you're looking at it, it's, it's a lot of like blue-green, violet blues. It's actually a variety of uh, of those types of colors in the in the shadows in through here. At least at the moment, it's, I think I actually think the path, which is kind of blue-gray in color, is actually reflecting back up. I'm not sure about that. But. 